Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's another HP product. A model 302A wave analyzer. The original name was actually harmonic wave analyzer because this is really what this does. This model was uh, introduced in 1959 and it is listed as the first instrument 100% transistor based. So how about that? And that is also why it's really lightweight. It is very, very big. At that time, most lab equipment of this caliber was like a half a meter wide. <laughs> so yeah. What, 32 centimeters high. And I think it is also about, yeah, 35, 40, including the cables and whatnot. So this is uh, a standard of size <laughs> from that time. And this one will cover, it says here on the, on the display or the setting for frequency, it goes all the way to zero, but that is uh, not true. It goes uh, actually to 20 Hertz and all the way to 50 kilohertz. I can feel there's something oh, touching the dial right there. So it's, so that is really, really nice. And there's also a huge ratio between the gears here. So you can go really, really fast. The input uh, range here is really, really f cool. See? So this is uh, the, all the different uh, ranges. Of course, your main frequency needs to be within this range, right? So if you have a one volt RMS main input, you can put this in one, right? And then you go to one, and then you adjust the carrier frequency for exactly zero. Right, then you know this is the reference point of your main carrier. Now you want to measure the harmonics, then you dial up to the harmonics, and if it's too weak in the same range, because there's only 10 dB resolution here, right? A little bit more maybe. Then you of course need to go down here in sensitivity. But you cannot touch the input range, because you cannot overdrive the input circuits obviously. So this is how you operate this unit. Um, yeah, let's try and power it up and see if it uh, works. Rear panel check. Power input. Oh yeah, look at that. You can run this off a DC battery, 18 to 28. So how cool is that? You select... <sighs> AC or DC input. Ooh, this is a little bit uh, loosey loosey. We're gonna look at that. It is locked in place, so you can't just change it. Hmm, this is a little bit. I don't know exactly what to say. Let's let's just not say anything when we can't say anything beautiful, right? So let's do the power on together. So this is an off. And we apply mains. Didn't happen anything. What? Three watts. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and the bulb is on. So, so that's it. We don't need to wait for any warm up. Yada, yada, yada. This is great. This is exactly transistor based stuff and we didn't get any doing doing and warm up and funny funny let's go to the very sensitive range and just touch there okay this is dead as i ah, damn it i always get defect stuff Ooh, no look at that okay so we go down to the super sensitive yeah. Ooh, we got life. All right, let's find this signal generator, shall we? 
So I think I'm doing this right. One vault here. Okay, so this is a variable. Not working. Absolute. All right, and this is in one. And look at that. And uh, what have I got? 10 kilohertz, one volt RMS. And look at that. It is crazy sensitive. The bandwidth here is just super, super not case. So what I can do is trim this for 10 kilohertz and then zero. See? So this is my calibration of the frequency dials. So then I carefully adjust for the highest point. Oh yeah, what have I got? This is a square wave, right? So this is 10 kilohertz square wave. Fantastic, let me, let me see what happens now if we go, that was 20, 10, right? So let's just dial to 20. See if we can find anything here. See, it's almost nothing at 20. So, of course, we need to go to 30. And then, yes, exactly what we want. Let me see how. <laughs> This is the third harmonic of the square wave, and it's about minus, minus 10. Let me see something funny. So now I go down in the range here, and now I get my signal. So yeah, if I am not absolutely far away, I'm saying that this is the result I also got <laughs> with the other unit I just tested uh, from radiometer well, that is but this one is a lot easier to use you don't have the bandwidth or the, all sorts of funky things so what is the difference here same all right so it seems like it's working. I'm super happy about that. Amazing product. 1959, right? Let's tear down. I know how to open this thing. I just took the four screws from the back. Oh, this is actually quite heavy. This steel. And then I think we are. But what is that? This is a 19 inch product that is inside a case like this. So you can actually take this out of this case, I guess. So how is that done? From the front, right? And then we kind of slide this out or, oh yeah, look. You got some little grabbers down there, so I need to bend it. I need to loosen it. Okay. This is the trick. This is the screw that has been that is holding it. Well, that is actually pretty smart. I'm gonna try and see if this works. Yes, that was it. A nice 19 inch rack mountable unit. But of course now we are missing the top and bottom plates because it's yeah open framed into this uh, chassis. So what did we see here? So this is the input range. So there's a string that goes all the way up here. And then we've got this one and the other one here is just a scale readout thing. That's quite nice. And here is the frequency done with spore gears. The fine adjustment is a also some magic inside this box. 
Ooh, we got some sockets and things. And this will be the meter amp done by hand. Again, this is the kind of design you would expect to be done in a factory that is like really used to doing stuff with tubes, right? Oh, let's work with transistors and let's just do it the good old way. We don't need any PCBs, do we? No. So we're inside. Ooh, all the secret adjustments only for super qualified personal. What is that? A little transformer. I'm not going to touch anything here, right? But it's difficult not to. Trim capacitors and transistors and it's really, really beautiful. A nice shielded. What is that thingy? In a socket. This is the magic thing. I really want to touch this. I think those are actually crystal filters because I think I heard a thing about that. Let me see. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I need to know what is inside this thing. Are you guys ready? Now comes the big reveal. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Four diodes. Duh. So why are they the most cool thing in the whole world? In a little shielded socket that, I don't know, it's, it's just, that is over-engineered. Like a kilometer over the top. Holy crap. So that would be the carrier balance adjustments. Resistors and capacitor and goes in here. Really, really nice. One percent resistance, nice. This will be the right side of the unit, and there's a secret lid. And what is hidden behind door number two? Some more funky stuff. What is that? So again, they care to make these with all the right numbers and names and everything, but still, they didn't care to make a PCB. Huh? Oh, those are diodes, really, really funny, funny type. And what is that? I and mean, Doctor or something? Looks a little bit like it, right? <laughs> yeah, two holes for two wires. Ooh. In here? What's that? Yeah, that's a feed through. And another one. This is really, really beautiful design. You can access this and then, yeah, okay. And here comes the magic. So now we're looking in from behind, and that will be crystal filters, 100 kilo cycles, it says. And we also find two more down there. I bet they are the same, but of course, you're not supposed to take them out and uh, swap them around because everything is aligned and adjusted for this. There was also something there. I really like this. There's a locking kind of thing around here. But it's not really locked to anything, is it? Yeah, okay. There's a screw. Okay, so it was locked. So if we unhook it like this, should be able to carefully Why is it careful? If this cracks and I bleed here at least we'll have it on video right okay we got it wow that is a sexy crystal 
really, really big. I wonder if this is very expensive. Look, it's four point connected to the crystal. Very, very beautiful. Yes, I kind of had the feeling there was another one here. So we got four of these thingies found so far. This one was shielded. Yeah, that is nice. This is the bottom side. There's a hole where you can access only one of the trimmers here. Wow. Beautiful. It even says what you're doing. So that is great. Wow, there are really a lot of trimmers of this and that and everything good stuff and we'll look at those transistors they are really something aren't they that is a really funny funny type i can't remember i've seen this before that is something but, and there's a diode like that it's pretty normal but yeah, two super special transistors found. Cool. And everything here is just done the old, old tech style. And you are not going to believe what I just saw. Look at that. A spare transistor mounted like that. Ha ha. Isn't that just sexy? Thank you, HP, for spare part. Ha <laughs> ha! Doo doo! I love it! This is just great! And where is. So, this is the tiny little 3 watt mains transformer because this thing is only using 3 watts. Okay, now we can also fix this. Because when I open stuff and I have access to everything, I always fix. So everything is nice and fine and ready to a new happy owner. Because everything I tear down is traded for some new and funny things. It's better to have the wire like that, right? But yeah, I must say this unit is super, super beautiful. Oi, what is that? That is another funny, funny 2N169. Beautiful transistor. And look, that's like vacuum sealed metal case or something. There's definitely a collector's item of those special transistors. If some crazy collector dudes are there, look at that. So all those different cans and stuff. And also, what is that one? Okay, that was the other filter. But we also see uh, some other filter. Okay, so there's filter here, good. So now we know shielded cables and yeah this is just fantastic design can't say that enough so this is the mains fuse mains power on indication and the mains switch but should i get a little bit scared about this this is chassis in there right so this black wire is connected to chassis the mains switch and the fuse. Wow. 
What? How is how's that? That is confusing. Those two wires, where are they going? This is weird. Now I am curious to find the schematic. Why would you do that? Hey? Weird, weird. So the black and the red striped go up to all this stuff here. Weird, weird. Right, I figured this out. So mains voltage comes in here via this wire through the fuse and this switch. Ooh, let me turn. Turn the input off. And then the switch is this way to AC up to the transformator, right? But since this unit can also run off DC, so in DC mode, this DC voltage goes through this part of the on-off switch. And it actually connects the ground input to ground. So that is how it works. So now we can be happy again. There's actually only one thing to complain about before we uh, close this and call it a day. What is this? Is this approved by FCC and all the higher powers? I don't know exactly what I would call this. This can't be standard, can it? Really?